All right. Well, welcome to the uh, the big finale of uh, Grisaya no Kiniku, the fruit of Grisaya. Uh, I am uh, I'm guest host DJ Rinny, and uh, it's time to it's time to get this suffering done and over with. Let's meet the gang. First up, we have a uh, usurped host Akion. Usurped isn't the right word. More like passed it on, so you can suffer. Uh, we have uh, Fates Bazinga. Hello. We have. Uh, I have uh, accepted my fate. <laughs> we have. Uh, oh, it's it's just Rio. Uh, it's just me. It's just you. All right, we got um, we got Kino. Yeah, learning to decelerate their planes this time. We have Rodrigo. See me time. I don't know what that. I don't know what that means. Um, we got we got uh, small cood. Hello. We have uh, Yumiko's number one fan, Maddie. It's true. And we have uh, the lad, the lith, the legend, lockdown. You're uh. I think your mic's not working. I saw you light up, but I didn't hear you. All right, well here, I have my very first plaint complaint about Fruit of Grisaya, and uh, anybody listening will be able to tell, but uh, what visual novel has it set to default to where the song doesn't repeat and it just plays the next song? This isn't an MP3 player. Stop that, Fruit of Grisaya. That's enough of that. My tattoo does. Ugh, it's just vile. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I guess without further ado it's time to talk about the Yumiko route and uh well since you're the number one fan Maddie, I'll let you start it out oh boy where to begin um oh, really where to begin uh you know I to be honest <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because I've already I've already said it in the in the in our little pre podcast thing. It's like I really did enjoy Yumiko's route for what it was. It was a it was a nice little family oriented emotional roller coaster for me. But at the same time, I came into this chat today and I was like, I don't remember a thing about it. It's um, it's nice, you know. It's got the the Grisaya themes and it's also got the uh, it, it's actually a lot of a it's a it's a lighter route in comparison to, you know, something like Aminades or, uh, the, you know, the fucked up stuff that happens at Machina's ends, and it, it's a lighter route in general, so I figure it doesn't really, you know, it's got those Grisaya themes in it, but it doesn't hit you as hard, so you don't con continuously remember. Uh, I mean, I mean, if I'm... If I'm being honest, and I'm not just saying this to sort of crap on the route, but I agree. Um, it's sort of uh, it's sort of what I've been saying in that I think um, having her last in the ladder, I just feel I feel it wasn't that great of a move because you know you can like the route all you want, but like like you said, Yumiko's your favorite, but you can't remember hardly anything that happened. She's, I mean, actually not, she's not my favorite. Oh, well, whatever. The, <laughs> the point is, the point is, you can you can like her a lot, and you can like the route a lot, but nothing really stuck. Um, so I guess that could be our first thing to talk about. How many of you here feel like a lot of stuff from Yumiko's route really stuck with you, was truly memorable? And I'm not, like, this is not an attack on the route or anything like that. So, you know, th don't, this isn't like an, hey, defend it type thing. Like, just be, be honest. I want to know how many of you, you know, me. I mean, go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, um, there are, there are, there, oh, you want to go? Uh, well, I mean, if you don't mind. Yeah, go. Sure. Okay. So, I felt the roof was good. It was decent. But it wasn't anything memorable. It was just there. It just existed. There wasn't anything that made me say, Oh, this is so great. There wasn't anything that made me say, Oh, this is terrible. But it just didn't have any spice, any 
anything that called you to it. It just, after you play through all the other routes, it just feels normal. There's nothing that keeps you invested, like, yep. such a story. There's nothing like, um, the, uh, Angelic Howl. There's nothing like the, uh, like, Michiru also dealing with her past. Like, Yumiko's past, compared to all of the others, is very tame. It's very normal, very tame, and that's why I don't think it fits well within Grisaya, because it's not as... It, because it, Grisaya already established itself as bad shit, ridiculous of the world, but, but it just doesn't do it. I kind of feel like it was like a really tame, watered-down version of the other Grisaya routes. Like, take out all the most kind of interesting or sensational or memorable things about the other roots, and then you're kind of left with like the bare bones of Yumiko's fruit. Yeah, it, it does feel, you know, a little stripped down. Like, I say that there are Grisaya parts to it. You know, there's a bit of uh, deep trauma and, you know, emotional fuckery that the rep pulled on me, at least, but it's not to the same caliber as the other routes in the uh, in the in the visual novel and I think that does play a play a role in the memorability of you know of the you know because I could pick out a couple things from all the different routes but the things that stick out to me you know are just certain CGs like the carousel CG when they go to the amusement park the good end CG and that's about it you know, those are the two scenes that are the most memorable to me, and I thought it was an excellent route. That kind of says something, doesn't it? Hmm. For me, I I only remember the like the first third of the routes, and after that, I don't really remember anything. Same. Kind of blurred. <clears throat> All right, Rayo, you got something? Well, for me, yeah. I kind of agree. The high points weren't as high as the other routes, I would say. But for me, it's quite solid throughout, and the simplicity of it, I actually quite like. It felt uh, a lot. I heard a lot of what I heard here is it's different. Uh, but for me, that difference is pretty. That was pretty enjoyable. The rule was simple, it has action, it had uh, the romance, uh, but well, I, I don't know what to say, but I liked it. The romance part in particular, I think if you want to say the most memorable part of it, I felt the when they were on the run, well, the, that's later, I, I just like the interactions they had, yeah. The silence speaks um, volumes for how this route is appreciated here. <laughs> does anyone hear a spirit? I can hear him. No, no, we've spirit. been saying, yeah, you got to fix your mic and stuff like that because it's not coming through. Maybe turn it off and on again or something. <laughs> or something. Classic tech support. Well, if we can't, you know, if, if, um, if we're struggling to think of things that are memorable, we might as well just get into the list, right? And just hash the shit. Yeah. No, because at least then we can offer like our thoughts on everything yeah. that happened, our, our our thoughts and prayers. So, okay. what's up, Rodrigo? Let, let Let's address the most important thing. Juji's pose during that one CG. The Sorry. JoJo pose. The JoJo pose. You call it the JoJo pose, I call it the smooth criminal pose. It looks yeah, like he's yeah, doing yeah. a reverse Michael Jackson. He's <laughs> got Michael Jackson up the hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just chamauna Himiko. And I, I mean, still think it's more Neo than anything else. I don't know. I just I I I want to know what the artist was thinking. Like because Conspiracy I just honor. Yeah, I want to know. Like, if this was intentional, or if they genuinely thought it was a good idea, or if they just <laughs> forgot that, wait a minute, that's not how physics work. Fuck. I don't oh, know. I can... Anyone's... 
I can kind of uh, understand what's going on in this picture and why he is on this angle. But uh, the artist really just uh, screwed up li this little bit. But uh, what I think was intended is that the uh, camera is not aligned with the horizon, really. The horizon itself goes from uh, top left to bottom right. And so the huge actually stands uh, orthogonal to the ground, but the camera is uh, diagonal. But w because there is nothing really except Yuji himself to show that the actual vertical direction goes uh, diagonal to the picture, it, it ends up being really funny. For example, we can see the trees in the background, and if we can actually have been able to see the trunks of the trees, I think those trunks would also be diagonal. He looks like he's staked in the ground, and there's just a really strong wind pushing him over. Well, the point is that this is a slope. This is a really steep slope of the grass before the river. So it's kind of yeah, but it's messed up. All right, Maddie, what do you got? I was going to say, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble when it comes to the art style or the CGs, but there are quite a few that I've noticed where things are a little off-center, and, you know, uh, it doesn't seem like it's drawn right. Like, the, there's a certain Machina CG where she's sticking her hands out towards you, and it looks like she's just bending up at the weirdest angle possible. So, I don't know if there's been a, a lot of, like, uh, I, I don't know. It just seems like it ha it's happened quite a bit, and I don't, I don't know why... I, I'm just gonna parrot you for a second. I don't know why. <laughs> There's also that one Sachi CG that, as you said, has like the fingers bent inward or some shit like that. <laughs> uh, when you're petting her, I think. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, she has weird crab hands. Crab hands. Yeah, so. <laughs> there's, there's quite a few, like, weird art choices. But this one takes the cake, most definitely. You can kind of get around all the other ones, but this one just looks fun. I feel oh, no, like... Yuji's a smooth criminal there. Is uh, I'm not going to complain about that. Also, well, uh, welcome, Lock. Yeah, I managed to uh, reset my yeah, nice driver, to hear from so you. it's all right now. <laughs> What's up, Bazinga? You had something? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, every time we actually get to see Yuji depicted, which isn't that often, it looks really bad. It's like really art was a total afterthought. Like it's way worse quality than. Yeah, well, and like you look at Yuji um, in this CG, and you disregard his creepy smile, um, and then you look at Yuji in the CG where Machina is learning how to shoot, and you're like, "What do you mean these are the same people?" Or later on, you will see the CG of him driving a car really fast, and uh, where are his eyebrows? <laughs> the, the it doesn't come up till later, but when um, Yuji's driving the car, it, it didn't look like Yuji at all. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like him at all. It looks like Yuji with shorter hair and no eyebrows. Like he's Super Saiyan three, just you know, without the muscles or the long blonde hair. And uh, what's another one? Uh, the one where he's driving Amane's motorcycle with Machina on the back. Um, maybe it's just because of the helmet and the goggles, but it also doesn't quite look like him either. Uh, but yeah, I've noticed... Uh, in fact, I'm just going to look it up really quick. I want to see how many artists participated uh, in this game. Because... Well, I don't really think that they secured the look of them until Labyrinth, really, I think. Yeah, I was actually going to say, like, if you're talking about certain CGs not looking like Yuji, I didn't feel like I knew what Yuji looked like throughout all of them. Yet, there was, n like, no real consistency in look there, so... They were trying to go for the kind of self-insert VN thing where it's like generic. Oh, yeah, anime, how uh, they usually don't have kind of... faces. I find it interesting that uh, development companies still try to go for that when you have Yuji himself, the fucking main character. Yeah, assuming he's actually got a past and personality and things like that, it does seem a bit strange. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, TLDR, weird arts. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm glad we got this pose talking out of our system. I want I wanted to cover it. I genuinely wanted to cover it. So I guess we could do that first and then we could talk about uh the the, the starting, the beginning. Yeah. Point yeah, all this, the uh, uh the uh the day after day of Yuji who once again looks weird in the CG uh fighting off all of the goons that are sent by yumiko's dad we as the readers know that but yuji and yumiko do not speaking not of the goons their shoulders yeah. man <laughs> another art another art nitpick man their, their shoulders slope down at a 45 degree angle from their neck and then drop straight down. and then like their heads are kind of like this weird like block shapes That's yeah you make like, them look slovenly yeah you gotta make them look weird i guess that makes sense but they're just hired goons. They are just hired goons. Faceless uh, bullies, as Magus would like to say. But yeah, uh, essentially, uh, just boobies ends up calling uh, Yuji, if boobies, I'm not mistaken. Just boobies, yep. Just boobies, and gives him a new mission. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Yumiko's dad, as we learn, wants to return her to the nest because he can't have a kid anymore as we learn later in the route so um you know he wants to bring her back because she's the heir to the fortune i forget the last name but she's an heir to the company and the fortune um, and he wants to uh mold her so you know you get these little asides where the dad bitches jb out and she doesn't actually deserve it <laughs> but he bitches her out and she's like oh well I'm gonna get you back whether you like it or not. He does it like five or six times in the story. But um, yeah, he, he ends up uh, asking Ichigaya to co-opt one of their agents, which just so happens to be Yuji, to protect, quote unquote, protect uh, Yumiko uh, against these goons. But he's reality, he's supposed to be a fall guy. As we learn, you know, uh, you know the goons, they get more and more uh, jaded, it seems like, and depressed. Uh, because as he Yuji constantly, constantly almost kills, kills them all. Ass. And as we learn, you know, constant asides, the dad is like, wait, what the fuck? This guy was supposed to fail. This so, guy was actually doing his, his job. It was, it was meant to scare her into submission and things yeah. like that. And it's like, oh no, hang on. This guy is still kicking our guy's asses. What's going on? Yeah. That and the, ass the assignment of a bodyguard in the first place was meant to build up Yumiko's fear and uh, get her on edge, uh, feeling like she's in real danger. Yeah. Well, it actually came through uh, Chiro Jiro, didn't it? The actual assignment, didn't it? it uh, did it? I think so, yeah. She was the one that um, actually put forward the plan of what was going to go on via JB in that. He's best girl. Anyways, uh, really? yeah. <laughs> no. I can scarcely believe it either. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it was meant to scare her, but she's very nonchalant about it. At least she shows to be nonchalant about the whole thing. Um, at first. But, you know, time goes on, and Yuji just keeps kicking these guys' asses, and it seems like this this violence starts bringing them closer together, if you will. Like Yumiko starts to appreciate the fact that he's actually protecting her. I appreciate the fact that you've nearly killed all these men. <laughs> well, I love how Yumiko is such a Stacy about it too. She's like, I could fucking die, and it'd be fine. Like just chewing her gum and twirling her hair. Okay, that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> but if <laughs> someone bad. wants to come save me, I wouldn't mind. She, I think she's like more just like depressed and doesn't really care. I thought she was more like nihilistic emo thirteen-year-old. Well, rather yeah, than Stacy. <laughs> You're two years off, but yeah, pretty. <laughs> Maybe oh. eventually. Fun fact for the podcast: Yumiko is fifteen years. Really? I thought... I thought, uh... According to the wiki... Oh, I th it see, I thought... Like, I thought Machina... I thought that was Machina's age. <clears throat> yeah, I was the same age. It was Machina and... Uh, you, 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 you
for the league. beginning of VNs that tell me all characters portrayed are 18 or above is a lie? Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah. Should Believe we need to tell people not. lie on the internet? Yeah, it's so weird thinking that first years in a three-year high school aren't all 18, huh? <gasps> yeah. You know, what I really would have liked is if there were a scene where Yumiko had to take on one of the goons on her own and made excellent use of her box cover. <laughs> she just fucking Split slits his throat. throat. <laughs> and Yuji's like, yeah. oh, why didn't I think of that? It, that is the box cutting just fades into the background. Which is fine, because oh. after Common Route, it kind of gets old. Oh, well, you know, she, she uses that box cutter later. Let's see. Um, yeah, she needs to open her package. Like that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Clip so, it. So, yes, eventually, um,. The goons start Shut to. It, well, it's not so much the goons that start to do it, but it's more the dad is like, actually, screw it, kill this guy, and so Yuji actually starts to get his ass kicked a bit, um, and they end up uh, sheltering themselves from the rain. And there's some thunder, and Yumiko's like, ah, ah, that scared me. Time to tell you about my past. <laughs> it scares the truth out of her, so to speak. And, yeah, uh, the lightning gives me flashbacks. Yeah, so then yeah, we get the, uh, then we then we get uh, yeah the big old the yeah lightning gives me flashbacks, literally a flashback of lightning. And, uh, yeah, so then we get into admittedly the most underwhelming of the flashbacks because I'm sorry, Michiru and Angelic Howl are so much more than this. I and don't I, think it's bad in and of itself, but it is a tough act to follow. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough act to follow, but it shouldn't really take away from her own personal trauma. Can't but help think maybe she'd be better off as the first fruit. I can't help but think that maybe she just shouldn't have been the finale. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of fall off the common route and oh, go into. Oh man, her I'm so glad all of you here are to support me after it doesn't matter anymore. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Well, you know, when we did that, yeah, yeah. Anyways, we can talk about that later. <laughs> um, so yeah, the flashback, you know, it's, it's, you know, the lightning does come into play uh, a little bit. You know, it's, it's, it's the main driving force. You know, you learn about why she doesn't like lightning later, but it starts off with her getting, uh, she, she's getting pulled along by her very, very jaded mother. Uh, very detached. They're, yeah, they're leaving. Uh, they're, well, they're just walking, and Yumiko is just such a happy little camper. She's just not for long. Not, not for long because, <laughs> mom, you know, she's just chatting on endlessly about kid stuff, and uh, his mom's like, "Oh, that's nice. Can you just shut the fuck up?" Please? About some cute little doggy she'd seen or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Damn near broke my heart, man. Yeah, and that's how you screw up again. You sound the shut up all the time. Yeah. And uh, we learn, you know, you know, a few lines later that they're actually leaving their uh, their home because uh, Yumiko's mother's unwell. You know, she's having uh, mental breakdowns just from the uh, stress that's been put on her from being a, a like a, an arranged marriage wife, right? Yeah, arranged marriage. You know, and of course that's not. I, I'm gonna just pause it a guess that nine times out of ten, that's not gonna be a happy marriage any way you look. It's also bad the fact that uh, Yumiko's dad isn't exactly the uh, nicest of guys. Best dad yeah. rewards. <laughs> Here, dad, here's your number one dad. That and because of her health and everything, she's managed to provide Yumiko, who's a Female child, but no hope of yeah. That was the any thing. other. That was because apparently we can't have girls inherit companies. That would be a no no. Gotta keep the male power or something like that. So she's already failed uh, at the duty she was sent there for. Really, produce a male heir. Oh, yeah. And so Yumiko is born female, and then it 
the Jin and the fa his so her her father has then just takes no interest in either of them anymore. And he has like multiple homes he goes to. He he rarely visits. He says barely anything at all. He just goes off to his uh, mistress, doesn't he? Well, it, it didn't say he was going to a mistress, did he? I thought it was just, um, he was just going to a different house. Like, maybe, like, a summer home that's fancier. Possibly both. Possibly both. And so, they go, um, Yumiko's mother and her go to live with her grandparents out in the country so that she can have time to mentally recover and everything. <sighs> And they are not nice grandparents at all. No, they are not the nice, um, love your, love your child grandparents. They are strictly business, and the, the arranged marriage is a way of keeping their own family company alive. And since, since Yumiko can't be the heir, and the, and they just see her as a burden, really, don't they? Yeah, as a yeah. burden. They don't even, they don't give her partic any particular negative attention, but they just pretend she doesn't exist effectively. Yeah, they just blank her, don't they, basically. Doesn't exist. No one really cares aside from the neighbor that lives next door. Who provides, who, pr who provides for the family for free, since they're, they're struggling financially. And it's no better with Yumiko's school life. She's outcast almost instantly. And so there's a small country town rumors get around and to talk about talk about her mother and her whatever illness she might have and how um how poor Yumiko is and everything like that. She maintains her grades just so as Did so as she can at least maintain the the very small place she kind of already has. In the world, at least she's not a problem child, I think she says. So yeah, she yeah she's trying to keep up the uh, facade of um, yeah. what she's meant to uh, hold up to and stuff like that. But it's just like, oh, is the, there's the rich girl. Oh, no, but she's got a troubled family and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh. And it's this whole like weird dynamic in Japanese schools and stuff like that with status but also how you're portrayed in the greater world and stuff like that, isn't there? She at least wants them to not have anything to complain about, even if they don't positively notice things that she's doing well. Yeah, someone say something. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see. The mom ending up in hospital? Yes, then? then oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you guys want to talk about how, you know, Yumiko would continuously visit her? Uh, you know, it was it was a thing that she wanted to do because it would, you know, I want to go talk to my mom. And over time, uh, it, it just seems like, you know, it, it starts grating on her mother. Like... Why is why is this kid continuously busy visiting me every day? Well, it's the only thing that Yumiko has to hold on to because otherwise she just doesn't really have anyone else, even if yeah. her mother doesn't think well of her. And she treks there on foot, like every day after school. I, th I think a few kilometers or something. I can't remember yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah few kilometers. Yeah. And yeah. just to go see her mom and chat with her and tell her, you know, everything's fine. Wishing her better. Not that it's helping very much, but... Yeah, after after a while, I don't think anything happens uh, for a while, and eventually the doctors start telling uh, Yumiko that her visits might be having a detriment towards her mother. Yeah, and the kind of, oh, you don't have to come every day, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little hazy on this part. I do apologize. I, I like, I remember the next big thing that happened was that, um, his, her mother eventually, you know, was like, why weren't you a boy? 
is that the next big, big thing that happens, or...? That, that's the first thing I can think of that happens next. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, there's the newspaper reporter who uh, hounds Yumiko, but nothing particular happens with him just yet. Um, yeah. other, th other than that she didn't know and he was kind to her and she ended up basically spilling the beans on something and, so, and some kind of expose was published and she got shit for it from her family. Yeah, yeah, she got scolded by her grandmother because she talked to some uh, rag writer. And, you know, he, he ends up pounding her every now and then on her way to school or on her way to the hospital. Oh, yeah, the reporter. Yep. Yeah, I don't really like that guy. It's, it's kind of creepy how he's just, like, following around Yumiko as a child. That's you know. how the paparazzi works, man. The paparazzi are pretty creepy. Yeah, yeah, it's creepy. And you think he's just an annoyance, and you think that what's actually going to happen is she's going to give him some sort of key information. But actually, <laughs> it is due to him that she finds <laughs> out, oh, so... My dad has someone else, and they have yes, a kid. the mistress. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's a piece of shit. Oh, thanks for the, thanks, yeah. thanks for the info. Yeah, because uh, for the entire the entire time, she's like, "Why? Why does my dad not like me? Why? Why does my dad not pay attention?" Because you know, we're told that there's the whole corporate uh, uh, culture. You know, she should have been a boy. Blah blah blah. But she doesn't know that. So this entire time, she's positing to herself, why does why does my dad not want to spend time with me? If I had done something different, could my dad have been with me? Etc, etc. So then she learns about this from the tablet. She's like, oh no, my dad's just kind of a piece of trash. I think there's a, a perhaps a, a, a line that Yumiko says that's along the lines of I'm I do, or I'm doing everything that in my power to change things that I can change. So I can get better grades. I can, I can work harder. I can be polite. I can do all these things, but I can't change the fact of my birth. No, she cannot. And then she, um, she cuts her hair really short into like a like a bob cut. So yeah, uh, whenever, her. whenever her mother ends up telling her why weren't you born a, a boy she she, she ran away down, runs away takes out the infamous box, cut, box cutter and chops off this is the, yeah this is the first time she's she takes out the box cutter and then she'll end up using it a couple more times later yeah, it's a pretty good haircut but, for using a box cutter to be fair Sure, well, I don't know, we didn't really see what didn't we see what it looked like? I think there was that one CG of I believe at later. least the kids in school were, uh, were like, ew, what's with her hair? Did she cut it herself? It's so, you know, so at least from mm -hmm. that, it seems like it wasn't the neatest job. Yeah. Not, not that they would have gave her compliments anyway. They would have, you know, found, found some reason to um, and of course, she's scolded for it. Mm -hmm. Because it makes too much of a bad, bad impression on her and the, her and family and everything. We can't go out of line. This is Japanese society, after all. Yeah, we'll talk shit right in front of your face, and you'll take it. So, I mean, if effectively at that point. Um, because isn't this where we go to the hospital and then the mom has some sort of like extra breakdown because of this tabloid? Well, before that, she was uh, she was actually recovering. She yes, was, she, was, she was about to be discharged. Discharged. She was getting back to normal. She was rapidly recovering, according to the doctors. Of course, the the grandmother didn't care. They, all, they only cared about her being a useful tool. In the family but. yeah she she went to the discharge meeting and didn't even bother to actually stop by to see her daughter on the way out 
that's right. Okay, yeah. I, I'd sort of forgotten that the entire impact of the rooftop scene was uh, because her mom had been recovering and was ready to, you know, finally get back into, you know, being being the Sakaki wife and all that. And so then naturally that's when everything just goes to goes to garbage. <laughs> She um, she mentions to Yumiko that the one place she'd like to go, or the one thing she'd like to do when she's discharged is um, to go up with Yumiko on the rooftop. And boy, does she. Indeed. She finds that fateful magazine. Yeah. Yeah, funny how that works. And uh, so at that point... Um, I mean, does anything else really notable happen other than, you know, time passed, I had no friends, and I was moody? So, like, does anything really noteworthy happen between now and when her dad re-enters her life? I'm not sure when the, uh, the one sort of true friend she had, which was the, the old maid neighbor lady, she mm -hmm. dies. Yeah. Um, she I dies. Think, and yeah, then, yeah. Um, she dies. I just don't. I don't. I don't really think that has all that much of an impact. I think that's just a thing that happens, more or less. I think it's like one thing on top of another. Maybe it happens right after or before everything kind of goes to shit with her mother. So, but like driving the despair. Yeah. But that, uh, well, isn't, isn't, uh, so isn't, isn't this the part when she first uses the box cutter? She used it first to cut her hair earlier. Oh, no, I meant she, uh, when she cuts that person, the, her, the student. Well, yeah, that would be the uh, second time. That. I believe that's right around now. I think it's before her dad re-enters her life. Yeah. It's I because of that that she... I've... Or, no. No, that I don't was know after, if we really. Or I don't know yeah. if we really discussed the. Well, um, I, I know. I'm just trying to figure out when was... this takes place. So is, yeah. Wait, no. Is it? I think that w that happens, and then her reaction is to melt down and use the box cutter on a classmate. Yeah, and that is that why she ends up in Mihama Academy. Eventually, I think, oh. I think there's more. I think there's more of a timeline to that, from what I can remember. She, she does go to live with her father, and he seems like a good guy at first. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm trying. He seems to repentant after. Into. Yeah. So, did, um, did, was anybody else like hmm. buying it? Like, was anybody else hoping that it would actually, like, he actually would be a good person, and the source of conflict would be from somewhere else? I was kind of. Mm. I was really hoping for that. Mm. Like, I was hoping he actually wouldn't be scum in the end, and that Yumiko's conflict would come from something else. Something else would wedge them apart. So I was kind of disappointed to find out that, oh no, he was actually just lying. I don't know. I mean, when you, me. when you already see what a bastard he is in like present day time, it's hard to believe that in the past he was that good a man. Oh, I know. I, that's why I was hoping it would be something else that was also bad that would stir the conflict. I, I don't know. I just wanted it to be more than the predictable outcome. It would be Well, we didn't really have that before with any of the other heroines, as it were. We didn't really have the uh, arsehole father trope beforehand, so it didn't really surprise me. I suppose that's true enough. We have the dead dad and the dead dad <laughs> Not, not dead, but they're not all they're all so then, yeah, I guess that 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 is where the conflict comes from. Uh, it turns out, yeah, he he spent the whole time making her happy and doing all these things, and but no, it was all actually a lie. He was just doing it, you know, to effectively get, to, yeah to groom her. To be the successor because things didn't work out for him so now he actually needs her he's doing all this because he has a use for her even though he he never intended on doing all those things he only intended on doing it to a point 
And I mean, I guess the one part that made me sort of surprised that the predictable outcome is what happened is because I didn't predict him going to such lengths to convince her. You know, I because usually when you think of just human nature, you think they'll do it to an extent or there's going to be, you know, obvious indications that it's not how he actually feels. But there, there weren't any. You know, it was very easy to believe this dude was actually genuine. You know, which is why the, the unpredictable thing was that the predictable outcome is what happened. But yes, so eventually she finds out this truth. She gets all pissed off. She goes to school and she, she cuts a bitch. And then she ends up at Mihama Academy. And that's where the thundery lightning flashback comes to an end at long last and we're back in the present time with the present conflict and normally i'm the type to be like boy this flashback could have ended a long time ago but i was sort of disappointed the flashback ended i was a lot more invested in it than i was the whole yuji and yumiko story is that just me or <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a kind of a standard, not so much a standard thing, but it is kind of an interesting kind of like slice into like Japanese culture and how things work in that way. Mm, yeah, fair enough, I suppose. Well, it was. What's up, Kino? You yeah. haven't been speaking much. I'm really just uh, don't have much to say about all these flashbacks and uh, about uh, most of the route, <laughs> really. Honestly, I have some things to say, but I'll wait until we get to the Yumiko herself and the uh, and the route as compared to another ones. Okay, well then, Bazinga, what's up? I don't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Delightful. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, does anybody have anything to say regarding the whole stretch of scenes where they're on the run? Mm. The scene when they were on the carousel was wholesome, but apart from that, it's nothing really special. Yeah, it's kind of weird and awkward in a way. I'm not quite sure whether the writers knew what they were doing, in a way. They also needed somewhere to put H scenes. You know what bothered me about it? Um, Machina's route did the on-the-run shit already, and did it a lot but, like, better. Don't get me wrong, there's the whole romance, and I think Yumiko's romance is pretty decent for what it is. You know, yeah. it's just them learning how to deal with the situation they're in and getting closer because of it. But... Yeah. That has high stakes. It's already been done once. Like, yeah, why, I was why would a lot you more the same plot? A lot more invested in Machina being on the run. Yeah. Did we skip the plane scene? No, no, no. That's coming up. Okay. Because yeah, eventually, uh, <clears throat> Yumiko makes the mistake of uh, giving in to her fear and anxiety and calling her dad via a payphone, which he is able to track. And eventually, um, Yumiko is, you know, more or less apprehended, and it's time for Yuji to suddenly discover he loves this person, just like in every other route. And now he will stop at nothing to make sure this person is safe and happy. So I'm pretty sure the plane scene like the was before the whole on the run. Yeah, the <laughs> plane scene was way before the shoot was taken from the school. Oh, well. Maybe when I typed up the talking points list, somebody should have pointed that out. Whoopsie. Then, okay, let's talk about the one thing more stupid than blowing up the school. <laughs> and that is... I don't is, know about that. Like, that that least... is... No, because here, let me just put it in a really biased way so it sounds worse than blowing up the school. So, he somehow manages to... Uh, find all the right paths to keep up with a literal automobile on a bicycle. A bicycle. He manages to... How many Velma to be exact? Yeah. I had to look up what that was. <laughs> yeah. At first I thought maybe there was like some uh, like electric aspect that like somehow it was like a cross between 
Like, <laughs> that there was some reason it could actually go that fast? No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... So it's like the mock bike from Pokemon Gen 3 and stuff like that. It's just somehow Yuji is able to keep up with this car. And it doesn't end there. Because a bike can't keep up with a plane. But a real speedy boy can. So he basically, <laughs> this man in this hotshot car, and this man looks like such a Melvin too. He's got like a blonde bull cut and everything. It's great. But, um, in a car. In yeah. a car that's obviously a Lamborghini Diablo. Yeah, yeah, he's. Or what was it, Lamborghini? And uh, I, I don't know that the the classic like let's change one letter or something. Oh, yeah. We're obviously referring to this brand, mm -hmm. but no, yeah, yeah, the standard yeah, things that so you don't have to pay royalties. Yeah, yeah. So Yuji ends up uh, being a speedy boy and you know breaking every speed limit law known to man. Uh, with a really ugly CG, <laughs> but we already talked about that. And uh, that man, dude really needed to get to his party, though. Yeah, he really needed to get to his party, and he just would not shut the hell up about his frozen turkey. And at first, oh, you you're like, turkey. yeah, at first you're like, why is this man so focused on the turkey? This is supposed to be a kind of a serious scene, maybe. So eventually, he's in his speedy boy. And the plane that is holding Yumiko is going to take off. So he thinks, all right. But well, actually, it's not just him. It's the author. They're like, all right, how do we stop this plane? Well, Yuji grabs the frozen turkey in question and speeds ahead and uses a backdraft to throw the turkey so it gets sucked into the fucking rotor. A frozen like, turkey grounds a plane. The best part, when it flashes to the inside... The pilots are like, shit, birch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the, the like, blonde dude said that he had brought the turkey home from holiday or some shit to bring to the party. So this isn't just, like, any frozen turkey. This is, like, this dude's really special frozen turkey. And also, he has to take the wheel while Yuji lugs the turkey at the plane, so... This man is the definition of cuck. <laughs> like, th he wants nothing but to stop the situation, and Yuji's like, hey, your prize turkey, I'm gonna throw it into a plane, can you take the wheel? And he's just like, uh, sure. Push I don't over mind it, I don't mind this scene, it's, it just uh, reminds me of kind of like Roger Moore style James Bond silliness. Oh, I know, I know, it's just this scene is so over the top, I, I couldn't take it seriously, and I mean, I'm sure maybe that's the point, but yeah, this scene was just, I was, I was, I spent the whole time just like with a raised eyebrow, like, are you, are you serious, are we really doing this? Are we really blowing up a plane rotor with a frozen fucking bird? This scene is the a scene that feels the most Grisaya like in the entire route. <laughs> he he just grabs a fucking turkey and eats it to stop an airplane. Yotith. <laughs> it was the most memorable thing in that entire route. I have to agree to the phrase. It it indeed was. It's memorable because it's awful. <laughs> it's hilarious. You know, I'm surprised that you didn't name the sensation Frozen Turkey Sensation. No, I didn't want In to hindsight. give this scene any more power than it already had. <laughs> he literally <laughs> grabs it and he looks at this man and he's like, This bitch frozen. Yeet. <laughs> and the man is like, What does that even mean? Actual dialogue from the Steam version. Oh, yeah, yeah is, is there any difference in the steam? Uh, in the steam? In the steam? I don't think so. I doubt it. I, I, I played the steam version, and there, I don't think there's any difference. Yeah, no, the steam version only cuts out all of the admittedly ridiculous amount of sexual references and jokes. And there's nothing sexual to talk about throwing a frozen bird into a plane rotor. I'm sure somebody could try, and maybe they succeed, but that is not me. That man is not going to be me. That man is me. <laughs> well, well, we'll have a separate podcast dedicated entirely to things like that. Don't you worry. 
Metro cast. All right, so um, I guess now, now they're on the run, right? Yeah, they well, go on the run after the plane, and that's when you get the the cute scenes of construction work, you know, construction, oh, 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 construction worker Yuji, and uh, stay at home prisoner Yumiko. It felt kind of clanady to me. It did. It reminded me a bit of uh, the first parts of After Story. Yeah, just like staying in the uh, apartment and not doing much and waiting for Yuji to come home and for anything to happen and that kind of thing, yeah. I gotta uh, say... Oh, oh, please continue. Uh, there was a laptop in, in the CG of their apartment. And... Probably yeah, Yumiko I'm, looking at porn just... while he's at work. But they were just, supposed like, to be. They said as well that all she had was like library books. There was like no internet connection, and they could barely like afford food and stuff. So she so... probably saved all of her favorite pictures and videos for ease of access. Of course. Or you know, just jack off someone in his sleep because she's bald. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, those those H scenes, like the rest of Grisaya's, are really something. Yumiko? I, I don't know if they're something good, but they're, they're something, all right. Yumiko, you touched my dick last night, didn't you? Yeah. No. Oh, Julia! No, no, I didn't do that. Stop it, Julia! Ugh. Like, so that's just, what happened? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, about this... Uh about this whole arc of the story, I'll have to say that uh, this is really the first part where Yumiko, as a character, has a chance to be... to, to change in any way. Yeah, because exactly. until that point, Yumiko is really constant, 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 a constant character. And uh, what uh, makes her different from all the others, at, at least in my opinion, is that uh, all the others uh, have some kind of trait which makes them really interesting out uh, out of the box and uh, attractive and whatever and Yumiko is kind of uh, keeps this uh, facade of okay I'm kind of a kudere which uh, stays indifferent to everything but deep inside there is something inside of me that potentially should be interesting and here finally we have a scene where she has to change uh, into something, and uh, at least me, I was excited to see, like, okay, let's see her, her true self, let's see her open up into something much more interesting than what she was in the common route, and I didn't get what I wanted at all. <laughs> yeah, in, in, you know, in the days leading up to the uh, phone call to her father, she kind of just gets, she just gets dare dare to Yuji. She just turns into just, they just kind of have this lovey-dovey couple on the run sort of dealio. And it, it, I don't know, I personally, I think it was just a little too long. You know, the phone call should have probably happened because they, they hint to her getting a little, you know, JB's like, you know, uh, she's going to get bored. She's going to get restless. She's not going to like the situation she's in. And then you get two, two scenes of them doing stuff, which is where the H scenes come in, Rini. And then, um, finally she makes the phone call. And there really isn't that much character development, I do agree. She doesn't have that chance to shine or change. She kind of just regresses into this girlfriend character. Yeah, well, and that's another reason why I hold Michiru's podcast, podcast route in such high regard compared to all the others, because... All the others go through a bit of development, but it's it's not really gradual. Like, Yumiko was very consistently, you know, how she was, and then we get to this on-the-run scene, and within like a day, suddenly, yes, she has regressed into this cutesy girlfriend character, which would be great if it were just more gradual. It would be more believable that way. And all it took was her molesting Yuji yeah, in his Yeah, all sleep. it took was just grabbing his dick in the middle of the night. As you do. Uh, As you do. <laughs> As is tradition. And, you know, of course it makes sense that he should be a nymphomaniac. That's neither here nor there. Yeah. That was kind of already established in the uh, common yeah. room. Uh, Worse than Amine. Just less upfront about it. 
They're both thotties. What's up, Rio? You got something? Thotties, thotties. No, uh, I'm not sure whether it was the version that I read. Um, I read the Steam version, but I kind of felt I actually like the on the run scene for the for the romance, so to speak. Uh, we just had um, the turkey scene where he just threw a turkey. That that was kind of quite a high point, and then we came to a more uh, it got a bit slowed down a bit just to. Uh, relax, so to speak. I think that's how I felt after the the kissing. On the, so I kind of like actually the interactions that they had. They didn't. You guys said he, she molested her, molested him in the dark. Is it in the original version? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. For. The Steam version it didn't happen. It was more of a kiss scene rather than an actual molestation, I guess. I would have liked that better. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the. Anyways, so since they didn't really directly go to sex mode, um, I felt it was more gradual rather yeah. than sudden. No, and that's unfortunately uh, a big problem with uh, you know Ergays like this, is that. Uh, it's often not gradual whatsoever, but when they censor it and when they change things around so they don't doink, it does seem a lot more gradual. And it's the same with a VN called If My Heart Had Wings. Uh, that that same sort of thing happens. There's a lot of scenes where if you play the Steam version, you're like, oh wow, that was really nice. And then you play the original version and you're like, wow, them screwing here just kind of kind of ruins it. And yeah, I feel like this was a VN like that. It suffered a lot from that. There were a lot of H scenes where it's like, you know, if you had just maybe smooched or just like not done this after saying such something meaningful, it would have been so much nicer. But no, it, let's just doink. Yeah, at some points, at some parts, like during other character shots and Yumiko's, it just felt like I didn't really need this here. I didn't, I didn't need it. I would have been fine without it. Just like skip over it because yeah, it, like you know, was needed. Yeah. So I still think the um, I quite like the now. romance between Yuji and Yumiko. Um, I felt like it seemed like it was more about their romance as a couple, about both of them, rather than focusing on the heroine, which I felt was more the case in the other routes. It did seem a bit more like naturally progressed as opposed to the other routes, to be fair. And there was the fact that Yuji was really nervous about um, confessing to Yumiko and there, there was the, like, the phone calls with JB and JB's kind of like encouraging him about the uh, cactus. Um, and I, I don't know, he doesn't want to make things awkward between them because they're on the run and he wants her to have a safe place to be without, you know, without making things awkward. So it, at least like there was some focus on how Yuji felt there and I thought they were kind of cute together. <laughs> but all things have to come to an end, of course. Even, you know, and I, I, I do agree. I think if you, the problem is you have to take out all of the development that Yumiko got beforehand. You know, the the whole Kudere thing, uh, her her archetype, in order to, uh, I think, thoroughly enjoy that. Because, like, I was reading through it, and I'm like, man, where is where is box cutter Yumiko? Where'd she go? She just kind of disappears off the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and that's that's what got you know got it for me. Is I was like, yeah, sure, I enjoy it. I enjoy what I'm reading, but at the same time, why would you change her character like this? At least this this sudden. So yeah, it's it's all the the, the gradual romance argument. 
Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not so much gradual. It is reasonably sudden in terms of actual time frame, but it's understandable where her like box cutter personality disappears to because she actually has someone who loves her and cares for her, which, as we've seen from her backstory, has never really happened before. It just seems well, like the from what Maggie said earlier, like um. It, she should still be like a coup dairy, but not like in the. She shouldn't turn into like a lovey girlfriend, but she shouldn't really stay. I don't think she should stay like a coup dairy because she should like improve. Like her character should improve, and you know, it's because of her 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 past that she became like a coup dairy. So she should. <clears throat> I'm guessing it's more of kind of like a snapback response, where it's like she's had no love, now she has love, and so she's gone full over the other way kind of thing. Not exactly yeah. uh, realistic or that kind of thing, but understandable, I suppose. Well, I think it's kind of reasonably realistic in its own way. Um, I think as well, we don't get to see over how much, like, we don't properly feel how much time this took place over. Um, like, you know, because it's yeah, it is a bit and everything. Yeah. yeah, but this, like, does come to pass, or or at least the time that she spends with Yuji, you know, she, she spends quite a lot of time being guarded by him, being attacked, being half kidnapped, running away with him, living with him for months without actually expressing her feelings for him. So... Yeah, it is a bit hazy as to how long all of it takes. I mean, I, I, for some reason, my in my mind, it sticks about six months that they were living together. I don't know whether that actually comes from anything or whether I'm just making it up. But it I feels think they like were away for they were away for a year from Mihama, and I don't yeah, remember cause... the specifics. Of, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should probably start getting towards that. Um, so, you know, at the end of the lovey-dovey, doki-doki sort of deal that they got going on, eventually, it turns out that Yumiko, you know, she's having doubts, and they, they chat about her father, and, the you know, the regrets, and that kind of thing, and she eventually has, like, some sort of anxiety attack, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, she a, has a little bit of a panic her. attack. yeah. And she figures, you know, as you do when your mind is jumbled and you're panicking, that doing the shittiest thing and, you know, the shittiest thing you could possibly do is the best option. Of course. You got a way to twist it. So, yeah, she gives her old daddy-o a call from that there public payphone. And, um, but she doesn't really go through with anything. She just sort of breathes like a serial killer and then hangs up. <laughs> And, uh, you know, then she, you know, she instantly tells Yuji, you know, what happened and all that. So they're like, well, all right, well, we got to go on the run again. But this is where we get to the admittedly nice amusement park date. That I, was a nice I scene. did also want to note that before she uses the payphone, there are some pretty comic, comical, horrendous attempts at housewife Yumiko that uh, make Yuji think that they were there that are you know the oh yeah um, that they got too, ransacked yeah. yeah yeah that was a little funny i can't wait for you guys to experience roomba yumiko and labyrinth it's good stuff but um at least she tried <laughs> yeah she did her best but uh yes so we have this nice uh amusement park date on the carousel and all the rides and, you know, he does it just so Yumiko can, you know, have one of her promises fulfilled. And, you know, it's sort of a, an R&R moment. Although I did feel like it was kind of out of place because it's like, can you guys afford to do this right now? But I guess they could. Um, not like money-wise, more like, hey, isn't this dangerous to just be out in the open having fun? But regardless, this is where we are presented with the final choice, not only in the route, but if we follow the ladder in Fruit of Grisaia, where do they want to keep running away or do they want to face her dad and the proper choice is to face her dad but can we just take a moment and talk about how the fact that yumiko doesn't have a bad end yeah, yeah very, not uh, really no yeah she, she. she she's got a good end and then a mostly good end 
is neutral. referred to as a bad end in popular, you know, like playthroughs and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's really like a neutral end at worst. Because yeah, I mean, it's she's like the still... neutral end of the place, rap. Yeah, she's still happy. Like she expresses in this bad end that you know, I, I wish maybe we had resolved stuff with my dad, but she's not like held down by it. It's not like interfering with her life or anything. And it gets resolved too because they they end up running so good that that the game of tag is over and uh, Yumiko's dad just gives up, and that also means that Yuji was let go. Uh, by, you know, JB being JB and kissing ass because she absolutely loved him. Yeah. You guys all under underestimate JB. She's a fucking gold. Oh, I, I don't underestimate her. I just don't like her. <laughs> yeah, make no mistake. It's, JB it's just, uh, she's in a bad place. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, this this ending really seemed unsatisfying. And there's and there's another like weirdly I don't I don't know if we'll wanna call it inconsistent or not, but in this end, their child is a boy. So I was totally just thinking that. Yeah, like it, what what do we gain by changing the child's gender in the good end? Well it's a similar thing to Machina's ends, correct? No, Machina's doesn't make any sense at all. Market like you, it's, it's, it's it, child or bin bag. It's like yeah, well, it's just the thing with child yeah, 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 Yumiko's <laughs> child's gender. You know because at the end of the day, you know, real world science doesn't even know how to properly predict what gender the baby will be until the baby is already being you know made. So you know you you can pass that off as oh well some weird butterfly effect circumstance means that whenever they conceived the child, you know. This time, it, it, it was a girl. But Machina's... Yes, let's go all the way back to Machina's for a second. Because I don't think I participated in this. Why? Why? Why is Machina pregnant in the bad end when Yuji is dead, but she's not pregnant in the good end where he's alive? Because here's the thing. They obviously... They, they had their doink moments. But if Yuji dies... Obviously, there's no doinking to be had anymore. There's no way she can get pregnant from him. So, why is she pregnant then, but not in the good end, where God knows they've had even more opportunities to doink since then, so even if we ignore the consistency, she should be more likely to be pregnant in that end. So, yeah, it's just... And that's my whole deal with all the bad ends of Grisaia. They're so... Awful and inconsistent. And just Me. that right terrible. Oh, my opinion, but... I don't know, maybe the uh, stress of having Mackin's mother still alive instead of shot in the face made her more stressed and so I don't know. Yeah. Or if Yuji's alive, he funded the abortion. He just decides to play a Maybe prank and just that. push her down the stairs. <laughs> no, I got that. Yeah, that's that's even better. <laughs> yeah. What was that oh, noise? Oh, it's just Makina one, being a it, fucking idiot again. I do think in the Yumiko one it is kind of symbolic because with the bad end, it's a male, and so it's just carrying on what's going on. Whereas with the good ending, it's a girl and so it's trying to create something new kind of thing yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I know I, 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 I like, think you, so. you can pass it off as all those things I just I feel like it wasn't really a necessary change like that you don't really gain or lose anything from having them different it could have been a boy or a girl but it wouldn't have mattered I just don't see why it had to be different But you know. I think that's a cultural difference uh, between us and the Japanese and that kind of thing. But can we also, can so when we get to the part where um, we have the the final diplomatic showdown with Daddy Sakaki and Yuji and Yumiko and all that, um, so the whole plan is to 
have a committee vote to uh, basically kick Yumiko's dad off of it, um, which means it, it renders him powerless. So can I just take a moment and say how unnecessary a lot of this scene is? <laughs> because we have the entire moment of, oh, our plan failed. It didn't work. The dad won. And then all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, well, actually, there was a different vote that manages to save everything. And Yuji, because he's the edgelord protagonist who is invincible, manages to be the one behind it and responsible. And he's all cocky and stuff. And I really didn't like this. Honestly, okay, what really... Go ahead. Uh, what really thoroughly annoyed me was the way that all of the other girls, all of the other students of the academy were supposed to have been working behind the scenes this entire time that the two of them were on the run in order to, you know, like, plot her dad's downfall. And that just, like, it really annoyed me. It just struck me as so thoroughly ridiculous that they were, like, some kind of special ops political, like, unit that they'd like turned into so like they could Sachi maybe but yeah the rest don't make sense but it's even more the fact that even through all of their efforts it didn't actually fucking matter it was just Yuji making a phone call that actually made the difference it doesn't matter about the Scooby gang fuck them I've got I've got big tits over here to fucking pull the strings <laughs> JB just boobies foils the plan again I mean, she does have blonde hair and a sports car as well. She's like, you <laughs> she's German. And you like, I'll yeah. get you back. Don't worry, no, babe. No, guys, guys, hold on. Blonde hair, sports car, foreign. Was the man with the turkey just JB in disguise? <laughs> <laughs> was she really was helping Yuji out yeah, all, along? all along? The, the car wasn't fancy enough. It wasn't, it wasn't so gaudy. Can't be JB's car. She would never drive that. Was JB's boy? <laughs> JB's son? Car. Yeah, yeah. Was it JB's son? <laughs> I got this turkey sure from my mom. Child. Or is JB's just Melvin nerd of a younger brother? That's more possible. <laughs> but anyways, everything works out swell. We could at least admit. Yumiko's daughter is a cute, cute child. A very, she is a cute, yes. very cute child. Yuma. Her name is Yuma. So it's Yuji, Yumiko, and Yuma. You must be joking. Uh -uh. Oh, you must end this fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. So, um,. Yeah, no, don't don't you worry, Rodrigo. We're we're gonna we're gonna have that. So, does anybody have any final thoughts on the Yumiko route? Um, I just want to apologize to you, Renny. I'm sorry. We should have admit your slap. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, too late to apologize. Fuck. Too late oh. to apologize. Mm. I have to agree that it was completely underwhelming. Because well, first of all, it was uh, the, uh, through the whole time I it, uh, I was feeling like it, this is just a repeat of the Machina route, but just uh, Not as good. divided. Um, if I may just add, sure. What's up, Rail? Yeah, uh, I actually well for me, I do think there are some reasons that it, I felt that it would be a good uh, final route actually. Um, well, first of all, I, I liked it, uh, and the I, first half had quite a bit of uh, action, and which was which felt nice to me because I mean, the first half was it was Makina, which had action in it. Um, then we had a bit of it in uh, Amane's route at the end. Then, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there were much of uh, action in yeah, Sachi and Sachi's, didn't uh, have much. Yeah, if if at all. But and then it all comes back in Yumiko's route and it starts being all uh 
action-y again and cool and all that kind of thing. So it felt quite nice. And of course, with that, uh, the turkey scene as the high point of that. Then I also uh, like quite a bit a few of the cameos in there, Kiara a bit, which we get to know in Makina's route coming back here. And, and then at the last, I think this is the only route where all the heroines actually kind of work together in some form to actually go defeat the obstacles, so to speak. To even though, up, uh, ultimately... It is nice to see that, even anything. if it doesn't actually come to proper fruition. Yeah, they, they weren't the mastermind behind the whole thing, but it's actually nice to see them actually together working uh, 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 instead of being shoved out of the way in Makina. They were just went there after they ran away. Mm -hmm. uh, Amnes route again. They were there. Sachi, uh, they were in a helicopter. And Michiru, they were out of the loop about how Michiru uh, fake uh, that. So it's nice to see them here actually, you know, all involved and working together. Ah, so it, yeah, it's probably my, the least Grisaya ending of all of the endings. Yeah, so yeah, that's my argument for it. Uh, so then... Um, what's up, Bazinga? Oh no, I was just gonna say, you know, Yumiko gets her father's estate, and becomes a famous businesswoman, and then her father is actually human after all, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's really just, impactful. It's because he gets old and he's gonna die and he doesn't want to die alone. <laughs> so he's still he's still a rat bastard, and I hate him. But at least he gets some <laughs> sort of vindication. So I guess uh, I guess that's that. So fruit of Grisaya as a whole, what do you guys think? Ten out of ten. No, Wait. Ten out of ten. I would um, Wait, honestly, wonderful. yeah, and very interesting. Definitely nothing. It's not like anything I've ever played before. You know, it's it's got like it just it, it makes me want to play more stuff like it. Not like Grisaya feeling, but like more fucked up <laughs> visual. Um, you know, with that that tackle the emotions. You know, it. You know, this game it tackled. You know, people overdosing, people committing suicide. It tackled death and rape, and it tackled all these taboo topics that I've never seen in a visual novel before, and I found it very interesting. Uh, well, and then it well, mixed in... Oops, sorry. Well, the thing is, this is actually the first proper, like, Japanese visual novel I actually read, because before this, I'm, I'm a complete pleb. I came in off uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. Off of that, I did Katsuwa Shoujo, and then I did this. So this is the first, like, properly Japanese visual novel I read, and I've been told that this is a good one and stuff like that, and I was not disappointed. Yeah, for me, I liked it quite a lot. Not 10 out of 10, uh, it was more 8 out of 10. Um, I liked the comedy, and uh, in terms of everything else, it was solid as well. The music's great. So, yeah, it's just gener generally a quite high quality PN for me. I <clears throat> when I first read it, I it, I really liked it, but now that I look back at it, it isn't as good as I remember it being. It's still really good, but I I feel like when thing when I already let everything simmer down and and actually looking at it in a in a light of me having read a lot more visual novels, it's not as strong as I remember it being. No, I'm, I'm the same way. It's like I've only been properly reading visual novels for about a year now, but I do feel the same way. It was like I've read other things. I've gone to other kind of like genres around about, and yeah, it's like it's still good, but it's not as good as I remember. Yeah, I... I definitely enjoyed it for the most part. Um, 
I don't think any of the routes were bad. Uh, I just... It felt mostly mediocre to me, and I think that's because a lot of the themes and stuff that it deals with aren't ones that I get super into. Um, you know, because for, uh, honestly, Michiru's route is the only one that stands out to me. Um, all the others, you know, you can say a lot of good about them, but you can say just as much bad about them. Michiru's was the only route where I felt that wasn't entirely true. Uh, so, you know, I, I would say it's it's a 7 out of 10 for me. I, I would say people who enjoy, you know, visual novels in general and don't get the squicks from, you know, fucked up stuff, they would probably really like this. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say more or less I enjoyed it. I'll just be prepared for the uh, long common route. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a... That was not a joke. Everybody was like, no, it's not as long as people, you know, say it is. Listeners, I can assure you, it is. Don't believe it as... anybody who says otherwise. At least it wasn't as boring as rewrites common rap. You know, and that's all a matter of, that's all a matter of uh, subjectiveness, subjectivity, because... I liked Grisaya's common route more than rewrites, but at least rewrite occasionally had a plot to follow for the common route. At least it didn't feel like this entire thing could be skipped and we would lose nothing. Touche. Uh, well, my opinion is probably not really a popular one. Uh, at least among this group is, uh, and it is that. Uh, the common route is really the the best part of the of the Kajutsu at least, because uh, oh, uh, uh, could you want to say something before? <clears throat> um, for my personal thoughts on the um, like on the on Grisaya overall, it's a it's a lot darker of a visual novel than I was expecting, and like I don't have very much experience with. A lot of other visual novels, but the one was like a lot darker, but it also felt like a lot more real and grounded. And the and seeing the characters' backstories was, um, yeah, um, and that, some parts why some parts were good, some parts bad. But. That's why I really didn't like Yuji's stupid, over the fucking top solutions to everything, because everything else is so delightfully realistic. You can get immersed so easily and then yuji's like mm, detonate the school and it's like oh well fuck this then I yeah, it's very uh, that, that, that's he's the most very... example, to be fair yeah no i just i i enjoyed so much of you know like i said the realism of grisaya and the fact that you know in most cases you could see two people actually like being in this situation you know you you could really you know, identify with these characters because they're reacting how you would expect people to react. And then, yeah, it just kind of ruined it for me when it was time to blow up the school or let's uh, let's bury you in the ground in a coffin or fucking all this. For a HC. Shit. Yeah. But for like, um, like, you usually definitely has like a, like a backstory and a history that backs up his ability to do some of the things he does. But then... It goes like so far, like like when he does go blow up the school, and like you know. I mean, it's not it fair just... to put that into the context of just this visual novel in and of itself. Obviously, when we go into labyrinth and all that, that does bring things more to bear. But we're just looking at this yeah, visual yeah. novel. Right now, we're not in a labyrinth into con into context. So, <laughs> all right, you know what's up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so continuing my thought about the common route is that uh, my overall two factors of enjoyment of the Crusade as a whole are first the comedy and second the uh, characters themselves and uh, their interactions and how fun it is to be with them and see them, including stuff like action. And uh, but on the other side, I was uh, somewhat uh, quite disappointed with uh, all that relates to drama parts visual novel. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous podcast, uh, uh, the, all, uh, the 
patterns throughout all the five rounds is that uh, with uh, each goal you have some kind of uh, traits that uh, make her unique and make her great. And each round puts her exactly in a situation where she's physically unable to utilize those traits. And uh, the and the funny thing is that uh, Mitchell is the only one who g get. Uh, kind of immune to that because uh, uh, short rate is being funny and even throughout the dramatic parts of her route those parts continue being funny as I mentioned last time so but uh, overall I'd say that uh, the common route was absolutely great the first half the common route like part of each route was great but the drama was uh, not really my thing especially after finishing the uh, Sharin no Kuni, which is basically Grisaya with much, much better drama and uh, not as great everything else, I can definitely say that the drama was a weak part of the Kajutsu film. Hmm. And just, just a little, little addition is that uh, if uh, for me the uh, Grisaya no Kajutsu is overall uh, 8 out of 10, but if they just uh, remove the routes themselves and replace them with the more funny common route like stuff with each hair and I'd give it nine out. You're right, that is a very unpopular opinion. <laughs> I still I really know. like the common route. I thought I saw I I was thoroughly entertained and um, I'm not entirely on board with what he said, but I can understand where he's coming. Well, what I think everybody can't wait to get is for us to have sort of a callback to the original Little Busters podcast. So, we've all given our thoughts on Grisaya. You all know how much I love Michiru. But, now it's time for you all to fight each other. Def who's your best girl? Who's the best Grisaya girl? Why is she better than all the others? So, the Battle Royale? I don't know, but Sachi is shit. Okay, no. <laughs> That's, let me give let's, you. Let's go. Let's go oh, alphabetical yeah. in the list. Oh, no, I don't know about that. I feel like, like chaos list. sounds pretty nice here. Okay, so the the reason why Sachi is the best girl in all of Grisaya. First of all, she's competent. She's smart. She is loyal to a T. She will never leave you. She will. She will do anything you ever need her to do. She is, and she's not like dumb. She's intelligent. She 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 knows what she's doing. It at least after you know blowing up the school, she is the perfect woman. She has short hair. She's a tomboy. She uses hoodies. She is the embodiment of perfection in this visual novel. And if you say otherwise, you have no taste at all, and you should probably go get your brain checked. That's not a proper argument! That's an awful, awful <laughs> argument, Rodrigo, my man. I Let's not go right out to insult people. If you don't like Sachi, you have no taste. That, uh, that's not no an argument. Taste. But I did give good arguments to back up that claim. She's loyal. She is competent in a lot of ways. She's intelligent. She has friendly banter. She is all. She's willing to give her life for Juji. She is. She's the literal embodiment of all that is good in the world. I think she's really, uh, the, the embodiment of Who's uh, your best girl? being a pushover. But yeah, all right, Bazinga. Let's hear you. What have you got? Give us a proper argument. Mi Michiru. Um, um, unfortunately, I haven't properly formed an argument in my head yet. But... Do you want me to take um, over? Mm, okay. First of all, she's cute as fuck. Correct. Um, secondly, th she's a sundere, but she's a fake sundere. And it's totally adorable that she actually studies how to be a sundere. Correct. And... But also how she like fails at it in funny ways and kind of like sometimes forgets that she's meant to be a Cinderella and then suddenly remembers like ah uh, ah uh, it's not like I forgot how to be a Cinderella or anything. But hey, Baka, Yumiko, that Baka. was great, right? And Yumiko's like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> 
Um, she's really kind, and even though she's the butt of everyone jo everyone's jokes, we know how much she actually matters to everyone else in the academy as well, and how much everything falls apart without her, and not just Michiru too, but actually Michiru herself. Um, Did I something? Has, has Michiru helpful? Um, in Michiru's route, whenever we see her, um, whenever she's absent and she's in the hospital and everything, things start to, like, kind of fall apart, and you realize that she's, like, the go-between for people. Like, for example, when Sachi's requests aren't specific enough from other people, she makes Sachi's requests easier. Um... She's the glue that keeps me hammer together. She's yes. the quality of life. Yes. Uh, she's, she's really ganky. To the super glue. She loves cats. She loves her cat specifically. Let us not speak of what happens to the cat. The but cat dies. Anyways, it's a d yes, the cat <laughs> dies. Her. She has the cat a cat dies. perching on her fucking head for like loads of her root, and it's really cute. Um, and she's really kind to the cat, and she has like a special favorite place, um, which is cute. And, um, I yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Come to think of it, she kind of reminds me of another character who really likes cats and is a tsundere and doesn't want other people to know that she likes cats. Uh, actually, no, she <clears> doesn't. <throat> she actually, she does it the best. And uh, I think Mitru is the best cat lover out of all the visual novels in the world. Good thing you haven't read that many, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll chime in. Michiru's... That's about it. Michiru is pretty good. Let's see, has anyone fought for Machina yet? Oh, yeah. Austin would fight for Machina if he were here, but I'm, I'm interested. Kud and Kino, go on. Tell me why Kazuki is better than Michiru. <laughs> Try me. Oh, okay, let's go into this. So, Let's see, Kazuki, isn't it? Without, without going into anything to do with Labyrinth or Eden. Of course not. I haven't played them. Oh, okay, please go ahead then. So, let's see. Um, Kazuki isn't an idiot like Michiru is, so she could actually like think for herself. Uh, would an idiot be killed by cannibals? <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> You know exactly what happened. <laughs> well, she's not the most sociable person. Um, Pichu would be better at that. She does have her own quirks and everything. I can't, I can't shell her the hardest of everyone. She's not my absolute favorite. I can shell I because she's really, really annoying. And so is um. So is Michiru. Yeah, well, you know what Michiru won't do? If you go up to Michiru and say, Hey, Michiru, how are you doing? She'll give you an answer, a straightforward <laughs> answer, that involves no extra <laughs> yeah. questions that do nothing but waste time. Okay, okay, no. Sure, no, no. Why are you asking no, me no, if no, I'm no. okay? If you ask Michiru how she's doing, she will tell you, It's not like I like you, Baka. You or know, and that's more of an or, answer or than like Kazuki's bullshit. No, Kazuki's answer will make your... Uh, expand your worldview and uh, make your enjoy your time and uh, like. And you, you know what people are gonna think. You know what people are gonna think when she does that. They're gonna think, "Wow, shut the fuck up! I just asked how you were doing." I would think, "Wow, I love you even more." Anyway, uh, continuing <laughs> the uh, Kazuki shield that uh, as. Uh, uh, some uh, unknown wise person on the internet once said is that the three important qualities uh, of being the best girl are being uh, cute, kind, and helpful. And with Grisaia, uh, oh, I think God. most of the girls fulfill all the three categories, really, except Yumiko. Uh, and in Gadgets, at least. But uh, on top of that, all the, the, the Kazuki is not only cute, kind, and helpful, she is also really smart, she is also really funny, she is. And uh, even more, even more than that, she is really, really relatable. I won't go into all the details of why I found her relatable, but uh, she just uh, checks 
all the possible boxes that there are to check and she's a perfect human being and I really wish that not only she was real but I just wish that there were much much more people like her. Also I mean, she has white hair which is what matters to me. And red eyes. White if your plus. number one preferred quality in a person or in, well in a waifu is intelligence then like I, I guess I can see why Kazuki but yeah, this isn't meant to be, like, objective or anything like it's that. It's when that intelligence becomes arrogant that I just kind of stop being into it. There is nothing wrong with arrogance when you can back it up. No, that's still arrogant. You're just able to back I it mean, up. I mean, like, the def- yeah, like, the definition of arrogance it would- uh, I don't know. Can we move so, on Rin to- So, Ronaldo, who is your waifu? You already know. I, 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 I spent the entire last podcast talking about why mine was so good. Is there <coughs> anyone here who's going, going to defend this. Machina, though? Like, are there any Machina I'm, or Amane, or I Amane boys here? Machina. Oh, you. By the way, arrogant is defined as having or revealing an exaggerated sense of one's own importance or ability. She doesn't have an exaggerated sense because she is... She has great abilities, and she's very important. Oh, really? Why yep. was she uh, killed by cannibals? Checkmate, atheists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know so little, Rennie. Yeah, but she didn't have a suicidal breakdown because she had another personality. You cannot <laughs> blame somebody for that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? At least my work, man. Wait, no, oh, actually, yeah, no. You know what? You know what, Rodrigo? If that looking were in that situation, she wouldn't. She you know what, Rodrigo? I can, I can absolutely believe that you would stoop that low because you know what? You have a habit of holding people accountable for things out of their control, like Konohana Lucia. Lucia is a special case. No, she's not. Kudo, defend Machina, and then have us laugh at you. <laughs> Wait, why would you laugh at me? Because Machina's awful. Yeah, but, but she's Machina. She's so cute. Wow, great <laughs> defense, buddy. Okay, I never said I was about to make an argument. Okay? <laughs> Austin is rolling in his grave. <laughs> oh, he can Mitcher... keep rolling because it's not going to get any better. Mitchell's tartan pinafore is adorable. <laughs> I love how that is true. Bazinga that is spends this entire the time. CG. She's just like, that's not a valid argument. And then literally everything she has to say about Michiru is, yeah, this was cute. <laughs> am I going to be able to, am I allowed to defend Cute is justice. Do I need any other argument? No, you do Sachi not. Sachi is cute as fuck, even more so than Michiru. Incorrect. All right, so over. defend Machina. Go. Okay. So, Ma so Machina is a cute little lovable idiot, despite how... Just like Michiru? Would she? I was gonna say, like, is she stupider than Michiru? I'm not oh, sure. Oh, oh, yes. 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 But in some way, she's smarter than Michiru. Like, how she can memorize the entire pages. She's like a That's natural not genius. That's smart. That's a talent. Well, it's a talent, yes, but I don't think she's. I don't know. Hmm. The thing is, I like <laughs> Machina as a character. I just really don't like her root. I am just. Right well, now, uh, on this battlefield, Kud is standing there with, like, a Machina shield, and I am just aiming my anti-Machina rifle at that shield, and every time he talks, I just fire. I'd rather Kuda. shoot the, I'd rather uh, shoot the uh, Kazuki defenders, to be honest. I think they're more offensive. Oh, yeah, they're <laughs> awful. Yeah. But Machina. Oh, how convincing. <laughs> You're right. I see the light. <laughs> you should. Uh, fuck, I don't know. They're just like they see. Chizuru is best girl. Yeah, I think Rini can agree with that one. Chizuru is definitely best girl. No. You mean <laughs> the, the elderly hag of a principal? She's cringy. She's Komari, she and that's cool. why I hate her. <laughs> she's Komari if, she's, if she was older. Yes, she's Komari if she was a slutty principal. Like, can we just <laughs> not talk about how ethically wrong it is the way she fantasizes about Yuji? Everybody fantasizes about you. Yuji how could you fantasizes not? about you. It's true. As corrupt Yuji, people say, you very masturbatory. 
rest in peace, Kuro. <laughs> well, I don't talk about how fucking Tuna Fish Man is best girl. Oh man, Tuna Fish what's, Man. What's that, is Maddie? Best girl. End of the podcast. <laughs> Can, does, yeah, yeah, just fucking end end this end end this, so that way you know Makita's worst girl, Sachi's worst girl. But Makita uh, is the worst girl. Yes, yeah, she, she is. She's terrible. But she's not terrible. No, I disagree. Amane is the worst. I'd put Yumiko over Maki. Amane is not worse. Listen, oh, girl, Angelic Howl Amane is party. pretty good. Regular Amane is just not that good. Common I'm Root. Yumiko at the bottom. Like, honestly, Common Root and other girls' root to Amane is not very good. <laughs> so so <laughs> mostly just Amane. Amane Root is in all of Angelic Howl. Well done. Alright, well. I'm glad we've uh, all finally agreed Michiru is the best, so well, this is where we say so our goodbyes. Michiru represents! And we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see you all hand, in the new Sachi's year. Sachi's the best girl everyone who says otherwise is a dumbass. I may be Thank a dumbass, you. but at least I have good taste. At least um, we didn't blow up a building. Yeah, still fucking a moron. At least I, we didn't get buried under a coffin. Well, you know what? Better than blowing up a school and causing taxpayers thousands of dollars. At least I yeah, didn't have a benefit to them. It was a pretty cheap coffin as well, wasn't it? Yeah. It was breakable. Yeah, it was completely cheap. Yeah, she could punch through it. Oh, no, but you know what? Girl, she so. caused a lot of mental damage to all of her friends. Did yeah, that well, at least bad? she isn't well, taxing I mean, the entire city said, over a detonated though. building. But did she make all of her friends think she was dead and make them weep over her? No, no. Yuji that did that. that Yuji huge. did that. Shut the fuck up, Rodrigo. Michiru did not do that. <laughs> Yuji blew up the school. <laughs> no, Sachi blew up the school. Yeah. Well, Sachi paid yeah, for after, like, like, repeatedly Sachi... attempting to set fire to it and yeah, failing. No, Sachi, and then getting Sachi really played a part in the no. demolition of that school. Michiru hey, did not make know anybody that. think she was dead. Yuji you know what? literally paralyzed her. <laughs> you know what? Fucking like Sachi's only deal is she's just following orders, right? She's just following orders. You know who else followed orders? The fucking Gestapo, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Sachi might as well be the Gestapo, all right? She, she might as well I be the Nazis. Point taken. <laughs> I have an army argument for Makina. Do you? Is there? Is there yeah, anyone else I can shoot a gun better than Makina besides Yuji? Um, Probably the others Sachi. if they were given the chance. Oh, she can shoot guns. Yeah, well, you know what, Rini? I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. I bet Sachi could make a good Sunderay if we just gave her the chance. You'd have to order her. You just right? ordered her to be better Michiru than Michiru herself, okay? <laughs> That's because <laughs> Michiru is being a fake Michiru. You absolute <laughs> imbecile. Her being Sunderay is not about her being hot. Sorry. <laughs> Let's it's not about and... her being actually Cindere, it's about her trying to be Cindere and failing and being awkwardly uh, funny yeah. and sweet and cute. Kind of like Sachi me. Sachi could do that if you order her. Like you. Yeah, but she'd do a shitty job. Okay, let's just end this podcast already. It's a train wreck. Sounds like admission <laughs> of defeat. Rejoice, Mitcher fans. Your day is now. All right, <laughs> we'll see you all in 2019. Well, actually, Everybody yeah, say I, goodbye. I, I, yeah. yeah. Bye. 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 Ugh, such a nice group of Mitcher fans.